let's try the ANSYS script to solve this problem. We have a beam which is fixed at this end. We call it point one. There is a uh, rolling boundary condition applied here, which call it point two. And there's a free end is point three. Between point two and point three, a constant distributed load is applied, which we say let's maybe equal to eight kilonewtons per meter. Uh, Young's modulus of 70 gigapascals, I, which is the sec uh, second moment of inertia, three times seven minus four meter to the four. L, the length of each section of the beam is four meters and Poisson ratio is 0.27. And these are the expected values we want for the displacements and for the forces at these points, point 0.1, point 0.2, and point 0.3. So if I minimize this, I have written a script here, which is very similar to the previous beam example that we covered. So again, I finish everything that I've done and then I'll clear the database, start the prop pre-processing, and pick element type 189. Again, 189 and 188 are the two beam element types that are available in ANSYS. Um, 189 is uh, the higher order beam element that we could use, which is more accurate, but higher order elements are usually um, take longer to, to solve the problem. Now I have defined a section type for a beam, a rectangular section type in uh, line seven. So again, if I go to section type, command here, section type, under beam, so I give the uh, reference number type beam and subcategory could be rectangular and on the rectangular, I can give values in section data. So if I find section data, here I can give values. So I have picked 0.245 and 0.245 for B and H of this cross section. And that's because it makes it closer to this value for I of the beam. That's why I picked that. It's not exact, but it would be close. Then these are the material properties, MP, EX, 1, 7, 8, E9 determines the Young's modulus of the beam and MP, comma, PRXY, comma, 1, comma, 27 gives me the Poisson ratio. Now to create three key points and two lines, but so far let's put this portion of the code in ANSYS and see what it does for me. So if I put that there, copy it in here, see that nothing shows up on the screen, but again, if I go back to element types, see that the beam 189 is created with the key options that I could use to change the behavior of the beam. And then with the material properties, Again, the material model one is applied or created for me. And then the next part is the sections, which I can plot here as a rectangular section. Next, I create three key points. And these are key point one, key point two, and key point three, the three points of the beam that I'm interested in and they define the endpoints and for me. So I create key points at locations that I desire. So let me just write this down again. KP1 at, let me make it all caps, KP1 at x equals zero y equals one, or y is actually equal to zero, and, and z is equal to zero. And then I have kp2 and kp3 at different locations. So kp2 is at x equals four, and kp3 is at 
x equals 8. So if I copy these parts in ANSYS, I see that three key points are created for me. The first one is behind the uh, coordinate system. Then I create lines. So create a line between KP1 and 2, and then create another line between key points two and three. So if I just put it there, that. So if I copy this part, I'll see that two elements are created for me. The next part is to mesh. Again, I activate the element type reference one, which is 189, real constant one, material property one, and section one, which is basically the section type that I defined here, material comma one that re refers to this material model, and type one refers to this element type. And then I define a e size of point zero uh, or of point one. So each element is going to have a point one um, length. And then I use L mesh, which is short for mesh line. Let me just show that in the uh, documentation again. L mesh gets the line numbers and meshes them. But if I put all, it will mesh all the lines. So if I create, or if I copy this part, and put it there. Now if I do end plot, short for node plot, I see the nodes. And if I do E plot, I see the elements created for me. Now I wanna fix this node and I want to apply a rolling boundary condition here and distribute force on these nodes. So if I go back to my script, the first thing I use is that, or I do is that I say select nodes. So I command, I use the end cell command, which basically is short for select nodes. Select nodes between x equals 4 and x equals 8. Let's find the end cell command in the documentation. So end cell type you can select, we can reselect, also select and unselect. We will cover these through the examples that we'll cover in the uh, class. We will have to use a lot of these selections of nodes and areas and elements throughout the examples. So we'll cover them. Um, just be familiar with the end, end cell command. And then when we pick the end cell, so let me just do this part. And do end plot. See that the nodes between this point and the, the origin are not selected in my set right now. Only the nodes at the second portion of the node uh, or element uh, are, are selected. Now I see here I've used ESLN command, which means select elements attached to the selected nodes. Let's find ESLN in the documentation first. ESLN is in here, selects the nodes. And if I have actually put all here, I should put zero or one there, which means select the elements which are all attached to, which have all the nodes that are selected attached to them. So if I copy that, and put it in here and do e plot. See so that only those elements are plotted for me. I should have elements here too, but they're not selected. Now I use a command called SF beam. SF beam is only for beams, 
to apply surface forces. SF is short for surface force. And if I find the SF beam here, specifies forces on the SF beam. So the first one is the elements that we want to apply the forces to. I'm going to pick all because I've selected all the nodes or all the elements that I want to apply forces to. And then L key is the direction. So two is direction of Y. So I want to apply a surface force in the Y direction. And the type is pressure. Again, the label here, which is given in the reference we could go to, but we could have pressure for structural as shown in there. And then the value, which is 8,000. So one thing to note about surface forces is that if it's positive, it's toward the surface of the element. And if it's negative, it's against or out of outside or going outwards. So because we're going towards the surface of the element, like at here, we're going in this direction, we give a positive 8,000 there. So apply 8,000 Newton meter, well, let me just pressure on this section. Now if I copy this and apply there, see so that the distributed force is applied and then I do all cell and put it there. All cell, what it does is it selects everything in the set. So if I do E plot now, you see that all the elements are selected for me, even those that were not selected before. Now I use the D command to apply the boundary conditions. So at node equals 0, 0, 0, when x is 0, y is 0, and z is 0, I apply all degrees of freedom to be zero. So I just do that. It's applied there. And then at node x4, y0, and z0, I create, I apply a ui of zero, and then I finish. So do that. And this boundary condition is applied. Now the model is ready. I can come here to the solution, select the analysis type to be static and solve and finish. So I do that. And it says the solution is done. Now in pre-process or post-processing, I want to print the reaction forces. And then I want to select three nodes. Select three nodes. Again, I've used the n cell command. So I'm saying select node by s, which means select at location x. If I find n cell again, let me just um, show the command here. n cell select by item, which is location and then component, which is X, so um, location, component X, and the value is zero. And then I've used A for the next two lines, which means add to the previously selected set of nodes. So I, I select one node here, if I do that, and put it there, and do end plot. See, there's only one node selected. I mean, the, the forces, you can ignore them. And then I can do the second line and put it there. Do end plot again. Now this node and that node are selected. And then finally, this one to select the nodes that I'm interested in and the end plot again. So I have one, two, three nodes selected for me. And then I can plot or print anything for them. So right now, for this time being, let me just write all cell and do e plot. 
come back here. So after selecting those nodes, what I want to do is to print nodal displacements. And then print nodal rotations. So let's see what these lines do. Basically, PR is short for print, N is for nodal, SOL is for solution, and U is for displacement. Then we have print, nodal, solution, and ROT is for rotation. So I copy these parts and see what happens. Oh, I should have entered the pre post-processor first. Okay, now again, I have three windows open for me. The first one is the reaction forces, almost 24,000. If I go back to my PowerPoint, the expected results, let me minimize it and bring ANSYS here. The first one is the reaction forces. At node 1, I'm expecting 24,000, which is close. And it's because the cross-section that I gave doesn't give the exact uh, second moment of inertia here. And then I have the moment of almost 32,000 or negative 32,000, which is that one. And then FY is of almost 56,000 at node 2, which is here or, or here which is 56,000. And then the displacements, and this is the rotation, let me pick the displacements first. Node 1 doesn't have UY, so which is 0. Node 2 doesn't have UY, which is also 0 here. And Node 3 has a UY of minus um, 2.44 here. And that's also the same thing over there. And then let's take a look at the rotations. Node 1 doesn't have a rotation, so I don't have any rotation in Z direction. And then Node 2 has a rotation of 0 0.307, which is close to this one. Out is, is 0 0.305. The difference is in, in the, the power of the 10, so that is not a big problem. And then at Node 82, which is the last node for us, it, it says 0.713 we found 0.711. Again, it's because of the accuracy of the model. So we learned how to do model a beam in ANSYS with distributed forces and uh, uh, different sections of a beam.